So the situation in Missouri in the US with the shooting of Michael Brown, you were speaking about the double standards in policing which you've experienced and obviously there are big accusations that the American police have been handling the situation in a double, stand, double standard way in reference to the black community over there. So what would be your comments on that situation? I'm not in America, I don't know about that situation, but um, the, the, the way I see it in Luton is, is it's drawn through religious lines because they're not easy on the black community in Luton either. We've just got an investigation going on where another, another young black Lutonian has been killed in police custody. If you look at the statistics of how many black people are called, killed in police custody, it's very alarming. So when I'm talking about the two-tier policing system, it seems to be for the Muslim community because they're still hitting with iron fists the black community of this country as well. So I don't really have a comment because I don't know too much. I haven't really been too much on what's going on in America. I know someone's been killed and I know a lot of people are rioting, but I can just bring it back to here. The black community in this country have been hit with iron fists in the same way we are in Luton. It, it, there's no, it seems the concept of who they're tiptoeing around. When I talk about the, the two-tier treatment, for example, when these protesters wanted to protest against our troops, they were bought, lined up in front of them and within distance of spitting at them. When they wanted to set fire to our puppies, they were brought to Armitage Day and right around the corner so everyone could hear them and do it. When they wanted to protest outside the outside American Embassy, they were allowed to do it, right outside the Embassy. When we had a problem in Tower Hamlets and we wanted to go into Tower Hamlets to protest against the Lufthansa Rahman and the East London Mosque which we felt was harbouring extremism, we weren't even allowed into Tower Hamlets. So that's the two tier. You either have an e equal playing field, the rule of law has to be implemented equally across both communities because you get resentment, which is what we see in Luton. And that, not just on policing, issues like when Luton Town were at Wembley, it's a massive football game. I'll stand up because I feel taller. <laughs> but when Luton Town were at Wembley, a big football game everyone wanted to go to. Every child in the town would have wanted to go to that game. <coughs> Ten coaches rolled up outside with Muslim children on. And I remember the word went round everyone. The Luton Borough Council paid for all these coaches of Muslim children to go to the game. We contacted the council after and said, what's that about? They said, that's about integration. This is where I go that I get so wound up because every time they make a decision, it's the wrong decision. That is not integration. Integration would be filling those coaches with black, white, Asian, Sikh, Hindu, Jewish. You let every child go. But the decisions made most of the time by councils are what cause resentment. Many of the time it's got nothing to do with the Muslim community, but the Muslim community are resented due to decisions being made by far left politicians a lot of the time. Many instances I could go on, if you want to talk about Christmas, in 2009 or 10 they changed the name of Christmas in like five, six cities to Winter Festival. There's not one Muslim in this country that cares that we celebrate Christmas. There's not one. Who gets blamed when they change the name of Christmas? I'll tell you who gets blamed because I live in Luton. When we didn't have Christmas lights last year, I'll tell you what everyone's saying. Everyone's blaming the Muslims. It's got nothing to do with the Muslims. So decisions are made by councillors and the best way, this is one of the things I wanted to look at doing when I left the English Defence League. You see, to reinstall pride in working class kids, in working class communities, if you reinstall pride in that community, you're halfway to defeating a lot of the problems. You, they're less susceptible to be drawn to extremism, things like that, if they have pride in who they are and their identity. The best way to defend our identity and our culture is, to if, is for Muslims to help us. Because, for example, in Exeter, there's a lady driving a taxi. She's had a St George's flag on her car as a badge for 15 years. Now, the council threaten her to take her license if she doesn't remove that badge. Now, what that does, everyone blames Muslims. That's the reality of it. It's got nothing to do with Muslims. But in hindsight, rather than the English Defence League protesting, marching through that city, I had this meeting with English Defence League leaders and Quilliam and I asked a lot of the leaders, what is it that annoys you? Tell me what annoys you, tell me the different things. Tell me what is, and most of the things that people went through they had nothing to do with Muslims. It was to do with decisions being made that look bad, look like it's to do with Muslims. And I said the best way to do that, a far stronger and beneficial thing to do is in Exar, any Muslims in Exar would have happily probably gone with working class people in that town to the council, say we don't have a problem if there's a flag of St George on this taxi. We don't care if you call Christmas Christmas, yeah? but we need the support of Muslims to do that. So that was one of the things when I left that we were looking at doing, but uh, I ended up in jail, so nothing really happened. Um, as a follow-up to that, so you, do you then not 
think that in calling these extremists Muslims, you are making their task easier for them because if because that is what they want to be doing. They want people to think that this is Islam. They want people to think that this is and as you said, the Muslims of the community don't think don't have the same problems of views as them. Do you not think then labeling them as that before what they are, which is criminals and well, terrorists, no, I, I, is helping them? I think that the problem see this is where I have to be careful and what They are Muslims, yeah? Um, I would disagree, but... And they would call you a non-Muslim as well. So that's the problem. They are, it's, it's their interpretation which, as I've said, the Kurds are on the front line. They're also Muslims, yeah? It's a very difficult one because they use scripture to back up their... There has to be, there has to be the, the debate which we've stifled for too long. We've called anyone who wants to say anything about it, racist extremists and hounded and harassed over people's comments. But I think it would be wrong to, this is, see one of the things when probation comes to my house is, this was one of the issues I talked about. And this was one of the issues where they said that could result in me getting recalled to prison in what I said. I made a comment, and it's about David Cameron to be honest, and it's about exactly this point, it's about saying this has nothing to do with Islam. Unfortunately, I don't feel free to answer that question, which I feel embarrassed. It, it looks pathetic, doesn't it? But I'm shocked that anyone's allowed to limit what I can and can't say as long as it's within the law. I think everyone should find that out, outrageous. I'm shocked that I'm, I was sent to, sent to jail for a mortgage for defence and I'm on conditions that I can't contact the English Defence League. I could go on with all the different things that are going on about limiting my freedoms and and um, I'd love to answer your question, but I think it's just there's a blurry line which they've left clear that, they, that they've put in there for me that I don't want to end up in prison next week, and I still may end up in prison next week. I was meant to be talking here. I was recalled to prison. I just spent 28 days back in prison because someone threatened to rape my mum. I got, I got I had a month in jail. All I told them, I responded. They said they're looking for me. They're tracking my IP. All I responded was. I'll be in Bedford outside probation at 11 a.m. in the morning. Because I don't want people coming looking to my mum's house. I don't want people coming looking to my, come and try and find where I live. If someone's got a problem with me, it's got nothing to do with my wife, my mum, my children. So I told them where I'd be. They use that as an excuse for me to spend the last month in prison. So you can see how pathetic it is. I think that's pathetic. And um, I, I told them so. And that, if I'm honest, I think was to prevent me coming here. And they wanted to prevent me coming here because I was going to expose things which spoke to a gentleman about, I'd still like to come here. When I'm free of license, I'd love to come back in. I'm spending, spending time now telling the truth. There's a lot I haven't actually told as to the, the real truth behind why, why and when I left the English Defence League. There's a lot. And I don't want to dangle a cat and sack because people want to know, but I'm not free to tell you. I'm off license July 2015 on the 22nd. That's when I'll regain my freedom of speech and I'll use it. <laughs>